are some more specific questions about uh, selling a property. All right, let's go through them. Um, I would like to sell my property, but I don't like uh, my realtor putting a sign. All right, this is a question about putting a sign of the realtor. Like, I guess they're concerned about privacy or something like that. Is Can you opt not to put a sign? Yes, you can, but I don't see any reason why they would they would not put a sign in there because signs usually help sell the property. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And of the course, neighbors, there's... The neighbors uh -huh. will know, the neighbors will know that they're selling. They may have a relative that wants to move into the area. So, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot. I mean, that would limit the advertising, the marketing opportunity for the property by not putting a sign in there. Besides, they can make a special agreement that uh, they cannot just visit the property unless they're informed in advance, correct? Nobody was able to, if you're a realtor and they abide with the ethical standards of the National Association of Realtors, we, we have MLS rules that we need to follow and we violate that, we pay a fine, we could you know, risk, you know, uh, uh, risking our license to do so. So yeah, we, we, we read the instructions from the agent and if we don't want to disturb it and it's by appointment only, we do that. Mm -hmm. What about safety concerns, Rod, when you're selling your property and you're still living that property and you know that people can go in and out of your property as long as they're accompanied by a realtor? I mean, some people are a little bit they can, too private. They can. Well, you know, it, it depends on the instructions. Sometimes you can put a lockbox on your property, but, but the, the lockbox can, can only be opened by realtors, by agents who are members of the MLS in that certain uh, association. So if, if you have instructions that they need to make an appointment, they would not go there and just open the lockbox and enter in. Mm -hmm. Another question I, is... I have not seen I have not seen anyone. I've not had, a, had, had any problem when I tell them, you need, you need to make an appointment. You need to call the agent or you need to call the owner to make an appointment. Do not go in unless you have an appointment. Usually, um, realtors respect that. Uh-huh. Another question would be about open houses. Some people just don't want any open house anymore. They say, mm, it's good, but is it a regular thing with the realtors? They have to have an open house once or two times? Well, you know, a lot of people, a lot of, and, and, you know, hopefully realtors or other real estate agents don't kill. <laughs> open house, open house help the real estate agent. Yes. The right. Because basically, if you're if I'm having an open house, my purpose there is, well, number one, to expose the property and to let anybody want to see the property. Number two, to get leads from buyers yes. who hopefully are not represented by an agent. Hopefully, I could become their buyer. Mm -hmm. So, a seller can always opt not to have an open house? You don't have to have an open house, no. Uh -huh. if, you, if, you, if you have the ability to be able to show it during uh, the week, the weekdays, and the weekends, um, you don't have to have an open house. But open house normally would just invite anyone who wants uh, to see the property without making an appointment. Yes, that's true. Yeah. You know, the neighborhood, they're a little bit curious. They want to see your yeah, home. Well, usually, <laughs> open houses are the number, the number one. Uh, <laughs> they, they, I told them, looky lose. Look they just want to look. Another question here. Do you have to furnish each room of your house before you sell? Well, if it's vacant, it's nice to be able to stage it. Um, it's always nice to stage it because people, when it's, when it's furnished, buyers are very emotional. They, they always appeal to the emotional senses. And they, when they go in, when they see furniture in there, they would, oh, that's where I'm going to put my furniture. Oh, that's where I'm going to put my dining room. They always relate to it. So if, if you're looking at the if you're looking at the house that's vacant, you sh you don't have that emotional connection. Mm hmm. That's true. Oh, this is a good question. It says, uh, if you sign a listing or buying agreement with the agent and later find that you're unhappy with the arrangement, will the agent let you cancel the agreement? And will the agent stand behind our service to you? What's the company's policy about canceled agreements? It depends on the company. Uh, usually, I personally, if 
somebody that doesn't like to work with me, I just let them go. I don't care what the contract says. Oh. Because, because if somebody is unhappy with me or I'm, I'm, a, I'm not happy with someone, <laughs> why work together? <laughs> That's true. It's going to make your life miserable. But should you put that in the contract that, you know, like uh, after six months, if they're not well, able to sell, that you can opt out of the contract? Well, you really cannot put that in the contract. But, oh. but again, if you really have a reputable agent that you dealt with, normally they just would, they just would let you go. But sometimes you have, uh, you have an agent that basically said, well, you know, you sign a contract with me. You can't. Mm -hmm. Well, your only choice is to complain, file, file a complaint. And that's why hopefully when you file a complaint, that's the only way they would get, you know, mm. you. But yes, you know, it's an open contract. I think <clears throat> what you can do is you can put a provision in there. You can put a provision in there that, that if, if I am not satisfied with your service for any other reason, then I would be able to terminate, terminate the contract by giving you uh, two days notice or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm talking like a, a law student now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to me, Rod. You're my first interview. <laughs> Remember, I told you I'm going to interview you first, right? This I, I have to have the first interview. <laughs> I have to be in your graduation too. I have to be there, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, so I just I just want to. <clears throat> this is a big caveat. I'm not giving any kind of legal advice. I'm not. Giving <laughs> That's advice. right. So I just wanna I just wanna disclaim that to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, but one has to be very careful. So perhaps somebody you really need a realtor to guide you along. But if you have a realtor, you then need another person who can give you legal advice about your realtor, correct? Uh yes, I think so. And that's the reason why I went to the league. I, I, you know, I, I decided to go to the league the, uh -huh. to, to study law because I, you, there's not much qualifications to become a realtor, mm -hmm. and it just saddens me that with my qualifications, I am pretty much in line with all the others mm -hmm. who don't have the formal training and education like I did. Right, and that's right. It's very hard to communicate that way when 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 their level of, of expertise is different from mine. So, like you're overqualified for what you're doing. I am overqualified, yeah. So hopefully... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can put everything to use after your law degree, right? <laughs> I am overqualified and people don't know that they get, they, they get 10 times more from me for the same amount of money. But that's okay. You're earning a lot of money. So you're a multimillionaire and soon to become a billionaire. <laughs> I wish. <laughs>